Good day. I am here. I am so delighted to be here with Martin Dearlove, who lives in the UK. He is a field practitioner. He is uh, experienced in social work, and he has decades of experience working with kids in trauma. So I invited him to Reading Swizzle today because we're going to talk about how trauma impacts the reading learning process. I want to mention that um, Martin has 51,000 followers on LinkedIn, and I love his posts so much. Uh, they speak to my heart and they speak to my mind. Um, but I'm going to let you talk a little bit more about yourself. And then for the audience, if you would define what is trauma? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, of, first of all, um, <clears throat> you're very correct in terms of uh, my experience. Um, I have worked with children and families for a, a long time, where uh, be it on the front line, statutory services, so government services, so that's the child protection, um, family support um, as a qualified registered social worker, both in the United Kingdom, England, namely, um, and also in Australia, Western Australia. So I'm a dual citizen of both countries, uh, me and my family, um, and I worked in child protection also in uh, Western Australia, and also quite a lot of experience in uh, non-government um, charitable organisations, <coughs> working as a social worker, and 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 pre-social work qualification, working as a youth worker, working in health and social care with different groups of 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 of, of clients, not just children. Um, but predominantly, um, it has been children, and it's also been predominantly a, also in a range of settings, um, from a fieldwork setting to a school to a um, to a residential setting, etc. So um, um, I've worked in various settings as well. Um, <clears throat> so the issue of trauma, um, which has become quite um close close to me um and close to my children um for various reasons um I, I, for me personally I, I i had very early childhood trauma um as did my children um um so i under the age of three we talk about the first thousand days and um and i had trauma with no memory um of it and memory as in you know i can remember it um and you, you children don't remember much under three anyway because it's implicit memory and i think it's down to two and a half now that, that they've managed to research that you could probably remember things it, it was previously about three and a half it's about two and a half now um but also this disso dissociation um and there's also the theory that you split when you have trauma that the mind splits and you cut off like cutting a wire um and so from my perspective the, the trauma my trauma was very much um hidden quite secretive um and i grew up not not not, not knowing a lot about it but my body remembers mm -hmm. and um lots of um obviously there's a, a famous book about that the body keeps the score um and um as time went on um my own trauma started to um even as a child seep out but trauma back then wasn't really spoken about um it was more related to soldiers in vietnam was was predominantly the the the, the first um link i had with trauma in films in on in, in documentaries that it was always related to soldiers which it is um but anybody can have trauma Obviously, um, in relation to my children, well, both my children are adopted. They come; from, um, they were from the child protection system in the UK um, as a result of um, um, harm um, as young young children. So we're in the looked after system, and um, me and my wife adopted them when they were very very young. Um, but trauma there. Um, <clears throat> Came from trauma can come from um, a whole range of things. It can be genetic, it can be intergenerational trauma. Um, you see that as a, in Western Australia, we um, I saw that a lot within the Aboriginal community. 
as you would in America as well with the First Nations people. Um, so um, intergenerational is, is, is something that can certainly be passed down, and it can be it can be genetic. It can be um, trauma. Can be um, those first thousand days in terms of brain development is absolutely crucial. Um, and uh, if there's no early intervention and it's missed, and it and it and it was in my day, then then um, it it spills out as you grow, as you grow up, and you have to work out what's going on. And eventually, you 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 may get those moments where right, which I did eventually, <clears throat> um, but it wasn't until I was nearly about forty eight I realized that something happened a long time ago. So that that took a long time. Um, my children, because I probably because of my experience, my reading, my um, everything that's happened to me, but also and, and um, being in the profession that I was in, I was able to be very open with my children in terms of what trauma is and what they experience and what they were experiencing, what their triggers were, and be able to be a therapeutic parent. Um, and so they receive very therapeutic. Um, understanding and parenting which is completely different to, to traditional parenting completely different than completely different um and you have to be because of the trauma response in the body um and um often children will come with comor comorbid conditions so although they are diagnosed with pdsd they're also diagnosed with adhd some argue that the two are closely related and, and, and are formed uh, as a result of the former um, um, also ASD sensory processing disorder um, and learning difficulties so dyslexia dyscalculia dysgraphia um, are the three they are both um, uh, diagnosed with um, through the Dex dyslexia foundation in western Australia so um, reading, uh, when we come to learning and reading, um, uh, they were both moderate to severe. So one daughter was severe, one, one daughter was moderate in relation to those three categories, which are to do with maths, to do with reading, to do with spelling, to do with writing, etc. And they had all those other things alongside it as, as, as well, which we, 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 didn't, we didn't quite know at the time. Um, we didn't have a diagnosis. We knew something wasn't right, and um, uh, and I guess I'll touch probably touch on this point again. I think I've mentioned already the importance of early intervention mm -hmm. in trauma, um, and within the curriculum and within education um, to work out um, um, a, a a really robust plan um, to be in the right school in the right environment for a child um to be able to reach a goal of being able to read uh for example um my children went through three primary schools and two periods of homeschooling and currently they're out of school i'm a stay-at-home dad we've just got confirmed today a school that they won't start till september but it is a special needs school um it's excellent um we moved back to england as a result of poor education in western australia and mm -hmm. Um, and returned to the UK where we knew the education would be better and they also looked after their children who were adopted much better as well through the government, through the adoption fund which would deal with the trauma and also deal with the educational issues So, so Martin, did you have, since you experienced childhood trauma did you have difficulty learning to read or write or do maths? No, I didn't no, I didn't. Not I, I. I was. I was. I was average, but I didn't have. I didn't have problems uh, at school. Um, I had a, a limited amount of speech and development, speech and language development therapy, but other than that, I was. I was okay reader. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't have that. I didn't have that any difficulties with that, uh, and I went on to university and I was able to read well and analyze well and comprehend well and um get a degree yeah exactly. so tim shanahan is a reading literacy expert 
and he has his own blog and he's out of the University of Chicago. So I just posted on my page and I'll attach it to this YouTube. But one of the things that he says in his article, so he synthesized a lot of the research um, that really they, so kids that experience trauma would be helped by schools that are sensitive to the trauma, but not uh, shortchanging kids in any way with their reading and writing and maths. Do you agree? Um, I'll speak from um, what I've observed very closely with my daughters. Um, and and it'd be a, it's a Western Australian perspective. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I can give, um, but but it 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 it's what occurred for them from about the age of five or six. So after kindergarten and moving on to year one, year two, as we, they refer it in Western Australia, um, was was fairly large group sizes of of reading um, and and individual time with, with 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 teachers as well. So a mixture of both, at sort of what you call level one, level two, and I think you would go to level three grades. Level three is where you've really got the one to one all the time. Level two is small groups. Um, level one is the whole class. Um, and 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 that um, was how kind of how it started off for the girls. They weren't even though we raised an issue that even though we were reading them because it's you know I, I see reading as everyone's responsibility around that child um parents not just teachers not just education but also oh, okay. you know family uh, um you know books were always out always read bedtime stories etc so um and the girls would always be taken to the library and they would love to pick books but the signs were there that they were beginning to fear become scared of reading and it 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 didn't come through the education system that they were having difficulties it wasn't getting to us as parents we mm -hmm. we could see it so we were saying i think they have dyslexia i think they're having problems with learning to read and they need additional help now we were told we were told at the first school um, that we needed to wait and and wait and just let's see what happens. Um, so we, we, we should have probably pushed and challenged that. If we knew more at that time, we would have we would have done that. We, we were also concerned about other things as well. So the ADHD the, very, and, and, and things like that um, and ASD. Um, so we... And um, it's it's it, it's it's I think amongst everything, and this is a lot of people find it hard to get. Um, when 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 you're a doctor, you're a foster carer, uh, um, and and you have children with comorbid com um, comorbid um, conditions that it, it you, you can you you become fatigued as a carer as a parent. And and you miss a lot of things, and you be, you you become extremely tired and exhausted and burnt out very quickly, and um and um um and, and that doesn't go away. That you've got that for you've got that for the whole you know uh, that doesn't go away. And and some people um yeah, it's it's very common that people just don't get it. Um, you know why 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 you know why you have the the difficulties that you have um um so um picking up on the reading without without focus was was difficult for us and to push it forward and we did push it forward eventually um but nobody um we had to do it ourselves and it wasn't until there were approximately nine and ten we went to the Dys dyslexia spelled foundation in perth western australia where they were um appropriately assessed for um, um, as I mentioned, dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia, um, at a severe level, I would question, and, and I strongly question now, um, how people miss that, and I, um, us as us as parents, but also how did how how did they get through school? And there's a degree of masking. Um, the youngest certainly could memorize and mask a way through. 
a, a book. So she wouldn't change her book for a long time. And she she kind of she go weeks with this book um, and nobody noticed. And, and then she was able to tell enough about the book to, to the teacher, et cetera, and to be able to read words, which she had no comprehension of whatsoever. No. Um, uh, and that's something that children do when they when they when they're fearful and when and when they're not and they're living with that and they're not able to they they're not able to, to really in the terms of development um, express what's really going on why they're not getting it why why am I as a six seven year old not getting this I'm finding this hard um, and so um, eventually and so 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 eventually they they eventually they um um difficulties were then expressed right in relate in relationships within the classroom um they became they were bullied um they obviously had the learning difficulties which we were picking up on and they were they were struggling to um 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 thriving classroom um and thrive in the playground um and so so they had a whole range of como 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 uh, situ- um difficulties which um they were dealing with and they were targeted by other children and a lot of the teachers didn't know how to deal or understand or what was going on with them um Hence, three primary schools and two periods of homeschooling by the age of nine. Um, and the, the bullying was quite severe. And, severe. Um, and um, we had to remove them as a result of that um, from school to school. Yeah. I, I believe, Martin, that your story resonates with so many people across the globe and especially parents, people who have lived with trauma their whole lives. Um, This show is primarily about reading and making sure that writing and literacy is well addressed. You're a social worker, which I love because you're, you're a field practitioner and I have the utmost respect for people who are working with people and not just reading um, journal articles or writing them. I am a dyslexia specialist. A lot of people in the US that are educators are, follow follow me and you have many more. What would you say from your perspective as a parent, a social worker, what do schools across the globe need to do? Like if you have, were able to design the most ideal school, what would yeah. it look like? What What components do legislators need to know that we need to incorporate this into our public school systems um i think the 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 the, the, issue, the issue of reading um with children from such such backgrounds um we talk about trauma informed schooling um it's an it's, it's a development in America, as it is here in England, with trauma-informed school, schooling, um, there's this. <laughs> it, it's very complicated, and it's very individualized to the child. It's very systemic because there's a number of organisations and people involved within being able to enable that child or group of children to um, flourish in a school environment. Um, it was no surprise to me that in Western Australia, homeschooling certainly increased. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm noticing more and more as a result of the things probably we've spoken about already, that homeschooling in England is also not uncommon. So homeschooling, um, mm. I think it's I think it's worth just noting that, that, that you mentioned lots of parents globally. Have, have, because they've reached a point where they 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 have to homeschool. So when we, so when we're thinking about how a school is and what a school needs to be, um, 
if I t if I take my youngest child who had the most severe learning difficulties, uh, um, I, she needs to receive nurturing. She needs to feel safe. So you, I mentioned the bullying. So safety was a big thing. If she wasn't safe in the classroom and she was made to read, but she was, everybody laughed. She ran out of the class down the road. Horrible. Um, she was shamed. You know, she was shamed. And she's never forgotten it. She now has a very, very um, reluctancy to attend school. Um because it happened at such a young age and, and she had all these other things on top of it as well. Um, so um, advocacy is really important. Mm -hmm. Advocacy is really important. And the um, and bullying, we hear about it all the time, but mental health in schools is, is massive. Mm -hmm. It's a massive issue, whether it's with teenagers or whether it's with young children. It, it's there. It, it, it's, it's, it's there um is gender issues as well boys and girls um, in terms of um and countries vary on this and a lot of the scandinavian countries seem to be very good at education um lots of good research coming out from 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 places such as denmark finland um iceland etc um and how they when they start school plays a very important thing in relation to children i've just posted something on linkedin today about exercise during classes yeah doing the squats doing the push-ups and things like that um you have to be able to you have to be able to engage and nurture children um and specific children are going to need greater help and support and it's going to be needed at an earlier point of child development so, so Martin, do you think that having dyslexia specialists in every school would be the answer? To, uh, to absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and some schools do say this. Uh, one school we did go to apparently had all the teachers were trained in dyslexia, and it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't true. Right. Um, so, um, having specialist in school in with in dyslexia but also dyscalculia dysgraphia absolutely absolutely um my two daughters at the moment they go to a um, an out of school education program run by the local authority um just three hours a week but they have it one-to-one -one and they have maths for an hour maths english for an hour if we talk about dyscalculia the tuition she got she's a very visual learner so mm -hmm. we know she's a visual learner and they used the, the teacher she had used lots of visual uh, techniques with her in algebra and she got it. Good. Cool. Got it. Absolutely got it. Got the fractions. Everything was visual. Now I'm an active learner. I'm not a visual learner. Um, so if we, if we understand some of those things, you know, you know how your child learns, um, we all learn in different ways. Yes. And, and children with these, uh, who are new, um, with, with neurodevelopment who are neuro, neurodivergent um they have different bus paths as i call them they have different bus routes they do they get to an answer in a very different way and 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 um and it's not and it's often the, the same answer as everybody else it's not necessarily wrong they just get there in a different way so specialists help them to understand that it's okay to be this is the way you learn Exactly. And, 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 I wanna, and I'd like to point out that we have science to back that up because we have F, fMRI imaging out yeah. of Stanford and Harvard that show the brains of people with dyslexia yeah. are wired up in a different way. Completely, so, yeah. so through the, the specialized reading, they learn, they, they learn systematically, explicitly, but that builds new neural pathways. But I also want to share with you um, Dr. Sally Shavitz and her husband at the Yale Center for Dyslexia have done really groundbreaking work. Um, and I just finished a certificate course by her on Coursera. But if you get her book or you go online to the Yale Center for Dyslexia, 
now they can really, she has the characteristics of children when they're three and when they're four and when they're five. So when yeah. parents are really like, I don't know if there's something wrong uh, with my child, there are definitely markers to look for. And so yeah. I'll put that uh, link as well onto this YouTube. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think you bring up, and I think what happens in the U.S., uh, Martin, is that we have such disparity because our public schools are funded by local by local taxes. So wealthier students yeah. have the better schools. I don't know if it's the same in the U.K. Um, and that's really my my drive is to make sure that we are using uh, literacy practices in reading and writing to ensure that all students learn to read and write because I think at least here in America, it is our greatest social justice issue. And it angers me. Um, I, I do work as an advocate for parents uh, when they're meeting before the school. I also do pro bono work. And it is shocking to me what yeah. um, the differences are among school districts and what children receive. So, so my thing is, we've got to make sure that children that are not privileged have the same freedom as everyone else. Absolutely, I, t I totally, I totally agree with that. Um, in terms of um, poverty, in terms of um, regions, um, um, in terms of uh, unemployment, and all, all those things that can go on in a home, um, um, that impact on on a on, on the on the child and and they carry the weight of that around with them as well and take that into school um to be able to then learn um is 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 it's very difficult it's very difficult um and um it's it's such a complex complex picture um Funding is very important. I absolutely agree that 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 that, that funding um, has to be there for children. It often often isn't, and and uh, you know, in it's, it's the situation in the UK at the moment is that a lot of local authorities don't have um, the money to get children into the schools which necessarily they need to be in straight away. So there's a lot of tribunal tribunals um and complaints as a result of you know here I am daddy daycare um I've been looking after my children since June last year since we arrived back in in the UK they do now have an education health care plan which doesn't exist in Australia but it exists here which is wow. it's, gold. it's gold it's basically gold if you have an education health care plan what does that really mean because as an American I don't know what that means yeah, well, it used to be called a statement of special educational needs. Mm. It's now referred to as an education and healthcare plan. So they have to just not just bring in your learning dif learning disabilities or difficulties such as dyslexia, etc. They have to bring in the health. So they bring in post traumatic stress disorder, ADHD, all the neurodivergent stuff. So the report, the assessment, collates health and education. Awesome. So that that, that, that that is really that, it's a brilliant because it, 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 it's what's always been missing. So the, the trauma doesn't get missed. So the trauma is in there in the plan that this child has PTSD, for example. Yeah. Is yeah. this a standard practice across the UK? Yes. Wow. And yeah. is this pretty yeah. new? Because I haven't even read about it. Um, it's certainly it's come in since I've been in Australia. I was in Australia for seven years, so that's occurred within the last. I don't know. It, it's it's occurred in that period that that change over from a statement of special educational needs to an education and healthcare plan. Mm -hmm. And um, if your child receives that, then they become a priority. Um, you're you're allowed to then look at schools which are outside the mainstream. Are specialized in helping children with those needs They're referred to as um special 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 needs schools um but they um they take the pressure and the stress off the child because they're going into an environment where it's being developed to um smaller groups um a more diverse curriculum um 
they can participate in other activities um outdoors nature horses animals all those types of things cooking um and they can put together a curriculum around where their skills are um where they really where, where they really flourish that's that's not taking out maths or english they still have that totally um but they also get they also get lots of other things too in terms of being able to develop skills because they 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 will often struggle if they would stayed in the mainstream school they would they would they would i know my daughters would struggle to uh, at, uh attain any any type of kind of qualification as such now at this point in time um because they were delayed in um diagnosis um so um so yeah and also in the uk if you're a looked after child or you become adopted you also become a priority okay okay so if you have both you get a school very quick you, you, you get a school um and we learned today that we've got a, we've got a really really um creative school awesome. yeah that can do the therapy in the school that can also do the education and make it make it interesting for the child uh, and mm. and and the trauma informed it sounds like they're educating the whole child so yeah here we have a lot of lip service to educating the whole child but that really sounds like a practical application Abs absolute absolute very practical very practical very um when they start this school they they will probably wonder <laughs> what why is this so different mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're not used to this uh, so I'm, I'm waiting to the day to start um because they can chop and change they can move they can move in and out of the curriculum they can change subjects they can if, if something's not working they can change it they, they've got flexibility they can adapt because mm -hmm. emotionally they dysregulate so quickly so my, my children dysregulate so quickly um but they also have trained staff who understand that dysregulation so um uh, so if, if 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 the reading and the struggling the staff there understand that they understand that but what we also learned from doing this one-to-one -one tuition the closeness of that was that how they do learn now so we can pass that on we know that the visual learners so we know that to use that for maths and english and and, and so forth um and, and and talking about reading we've, we've kept at the reading um, and we've done it through different ways, whether it's been done through an IT program after school, um, um, whether it's been through speech and language as additional therapy. Um, and the girls have moved forwards with the reading. Um, what I will say genetically, because we're not birth parents, the birth father couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. So we bring in genetics. Um, he fell out of school very early on. Um, and fell through the loop and fell through fell through the hook that fell through the net um so gen genetically have they inherited the dyslexia the dysgraphia dyscalculia because dad can't yes. read or yeah, you know, birth dad can't read or write so um but we're changing that cycle so we we there's a I cycle to be broken because because about 95 percent of people can learn to read yeah. they yeah. can learn the alphabetic code yeah. um are there long waiting lists for these schools? Uh, do you have to, you know, if you're not in one of the target targeted intervention groups? Yeah. Because it sounds like a private education. This is what private education, the best private education in the U.S. looks like. Right. Okay. Um, there, there, there are long waits at the moment because because of the nature of the economic system in the UK and and the um and the the um different councils or local authorities as are called here so different geographical areas um let's say north yorkshire or we will say parts of london they all have different pots of money that are given to them um and and that has by the sound of things has reduced over time in england for various reasons um and so um some some schools and local authorities have struggled um to get children into the correct places quickly 
Um, th that, that's the circumstance at the moment. Um, and um, yeah, if 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 you don't fall into some of those categories, um, it can be difficult to get the support that that you need. So, do you think money is the biggest obstacle? Yeah, okay. definitely. I think money's a, 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 one obstacle. Um, I, if you're talking about Western Australia, I would be t I would be saying that knowledge is an obstacle. Mm -hmm. teacher training so yeah. we talk about universities training. colleges yeah yeah it's Absolutely. so our teacher training and here in the u.s the reading wars and i believe they go on in the uk as well yeah but, yeah you know using programs that are not peer-reviewed they're not evidence-based and yet yeah. we're 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 lathering on all of this instruction to kids and it's not really supposed to be used for about 40% of the population. So yeah. that's the biggest thing I see. And, and it's this, you know, I, I grew up as a reader. I love to read. Um, never saw my mom read a book ever in my whole life. Um, yeah. So I think she had dyslexia. She repeated first grade. Um, but but um, putting books in kids' hands does not make them a reader. No. Yeah. No, and so no, there's, a, it, there's a disconnect with this pedagogy and what's happening in schools, because I argue that if your children, your girls had the correct instruction from kindergarten on with sounds and symbols and the linkage, that whole decoding piece, because you were yeah. doing all the language comprehension with reading aloud, they yeah. wouldn't have, you know, it, it would have happened. So we have to get into the schools and make sure that the right reading instruction. And I just want to give a shout out to Tim Shanahan for this. Um, he writes, what matters in the teaching of reading is the amount of reading instruction, the content of reading instruction, and the quality of reading instruction. Yeah. And he also says, which I start, making sure that every child, including those who suffer trauma, receive enough teaching, focused on essential reading skills and abilities with sufficient quality, quality to encourage maximum learning is the right prescription. So he, he also makes the point that we can't be too overly sensitive because they're going to boost their self-esteem and confidence if they become readers and writers and be able to do math. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and um, when they're nurtured in such a way and and they're praised and, and encouraged that they've 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 taken a you know the smallest of steps that they they they've, they've, they've read a page they've read two pages they've read certain words um, that is massive to them that is massive to their confidence because a lot of these children lack in self esteem and they close down very quickly um and um you know when i talk about my youngest in particular um she wouldn't even go into the small reading groups that they had and you mentioned the number of programs that are out there um um just for curiosity i went on a four-day training course with the dyslexia spell foundation uh which was for teachers or for parents who homeschooled and i, I went on the course and I think what I found was 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 that um, a few things. One, teachers were reluctant to give a diagnosis of dyslexia or even to mention it. Second, uh, because it was kind of policy. Um, second was was that um, they were they were all using different programs. Um, and thirdly, the amount of programs that were out there um, were not very well evidence-based mm -hmm. and um that that really struck a, struck a chord with me um in terms of right okay so what am i going to use for lexi because i was homeschooling at the time so so what do i do because it, 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 was, it was all going back to phonics so right. we're all moving back to phonics and um because it disappeared so when i was at school it was phonics and then it all disappeared in the uk and it had in australia and now it was all coming back and it was kind of and, and I'd heard stories of teachers who, when that happened many years ago, when it, when phonics went the, disappeared, they left education. 
they didn't believe that what was what was happening they didn't believe that was the right way to teach so um um so yeah um it, it, the, 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 there was all those the, the, those those things which um were happening so I, yeah i went on a course and and, and uh, with the teachers uh, just, just, just to really sound out what was really going on, and the universities were all teaching different things. Mm -hmm. They are, and um, you know, Shally, Doctor Sally Shavitz, who is a medical doctor, but also the premier dyslexia expert in the world. Teachers can flag a student and say, "Oh my gosh, I think that we need to." Uh, look at this child more carefully. What yeah. I love about in the United States, they are 43 or 44 states out of our 50 are have dyslexia legislation or new dyslexia laws. So they have to screen students in kindergarten through second grade. Now they they vary widely. And where I think it breaks down is once a child is screened and we say, oh my gosh, this child needs extra help what's the plan after that there's really not a plan yeah. after it yeah. um yeah. but you know yeah. i love this also reading instruction tim shanahan itself should not be one of the challenges that kids with ptsd or other disorders must surmount to succeed as you said earlier they have so much already to carry that we as educators need to get the instruction correct. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Knowing the child, um, no, uh, trying to understand that some of the triggers that that they may have. And, and I went into school after school and explained the background, explained what had happened at other schools, what was not going right, what 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 was falling down. And it 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 didn't really help, right? Honest to be honest with you, um, some things were taken on board, some weren't. Um, um, but 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 ultimately, um, ultimately they learned better when they were at home. That's sad. <laughs> I mean, that's sad yeah. that our public education system isn't providing what it needs. But you know what? I I don't blame the teachers. I blame no, no. the university systems. That yeah. I mean, they're, these teachers are paying thousands of pounds or dollars to get an education and, yeah. and, and they exit and they're really not sure how to teach. Um, yeah. And so that is the biggest, one of the biggest problems. And then also in the U.S., we have administrators who really don't have any background specific, really deep, intensive training in reading or maths or writing. And they're making curricular decisions for thousands and thousands of kids. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and that's a similar theme that I've I've seen in other uh, other countries as well in in, in relation to policymakers uh, and administrators and not having that background or that understanding of 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 of, of children that we've spoken about today, um, and and those decisions being made which. Um, can last a long time um, and do and do detrimental harm. Right. Um, and I would say that my children have been harmed by the education system mm -hmm. to the point that we we had to, we we needed to take it to the state government and also the federal government in Australia. Good for you. Good absolutely, for you. absolutely. It, 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 it's it's um, we weren't the only people, and that was that was the thing. It was just that it was interesting to see um, on some of the blogs that that there were so many so many parents in Western Australia that were disappointed with the education system, and their children had been let down. And then I realised, right, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. It's not just us. It's not it just isn't. us. We're not alone here. <laughs> and, you know, I posted um, the U United States Supreme Court just ha had a ruling come out a few weeks ago um, in the case of the deaf student. His last name is Perez, where the yeah. system kept passing him along and yeah. telling his immigrant parents that everything was great. And then he gets to college or he gets to the high school graduation and they realize he's not going to receive a diploma. 
he's getting a certificate, receiving a certificate of, of attendance. Yeah. And this is really notable. The Supreme Court, all of the justices voted unanimously in favor of this now male adult uh, yeah. because the system completely let him down. And, and my hope is that people are reading, especially school administrators and lawmakers and people in the White House, um, they are looking at how the U.S. Department of Education, how we change this. It is not rocket science. We know yeah. when a kid is in trouble. Okay, we have two minutes left. What would you say to parents? So what, what kinds of things do parents, like any message that you have for parents of children who have trauma and or reading and learning difficulties? I think, I think, the, I, I think keep a very close eye on um, your child or children. Um, in relation to um, their uh, academic work or reading in particular, to always involve yourself as a parent with books and, and use the libraries. Um, and, if, and, and if you identify um, a, um, a difficulty with reading for your child, that you fight the system, um, that you raise um, and challenge um the parties that be um the schools the education system um to have an assessment um i wish that was something i had done and we had done um going back to when they were four or five years old um and to follow on from that to also to continue with that is, is is to get the services that your child deserves um to have them in place um, um, to have a plan, to have a care plan, to have a um, what wherever you are in which country, whatever plans that they have, but to have a plan that this this is this um this this is what my child needs, um, and and to have that um, to have that authority or that policy, um, made in favour of your child. Um, I, I think I think I I think I think people. I th I think there needs to be more advocacy around. I think a lot of parents are scared to fight yeah. the system. They're pushed away, um, and they accept they they accept what's given to them, and um, and and that's that can be that can be really hard for people. And I I totally get that, and I understand that. Um, I'm a different character. I've been in social work. I know how it works. I, um, I know the systems, and I know how the government works, and so on. Um, I know what they do. Um, and so I can fight that and I understand that. But many parents, many parents don't. Um, but but to, to seek an advocate, to seek an advocate. There are people out there who can fight your battle with you. Yeah. Yes. For you to and, and I think parents feel guilty that, you know, that we've given such trust to our public institutions and they feel yeah. guilty about challenging them or they feel we don't, I don't have the educational experience. Maybe I didn't go to college. And, but I always say to parents, Martin, that they know their child best, obviously, yeah. but this school will be in your rear view mirror. It will be, it's a passing phase. You will have your child for the rest of your life, hopefully. And they will, you, and you are their guardian. So yeah. you have to be able to speak on their behalf, even if you make others angry. And, Absolutely. and that does happen. You know, we have lots yeah. of cases, legal cases in this country, um, but it's okay if the school officials are angry because your child's yeah, life depends on it. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't get a chance to go back. Exactly, exactly. No, you can't go back. That's it. It's, it's, it's now or never. Yes. And, and, um, it, and, and that's really as blunt as it is. You won't get that chance back. And they're going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, and then the, they'll drop out of school. Something will happen. Uh, a, lot of, you know, a, lot of, a lot of children drop out of school because they, 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 they move into adolescence. And that's a whole different period of child development and you know, storm and stress, um, which is what it's often been termed. Uh, they've got other things, to, you, uh, you know, well, if they're unable to read at that point, that's really, really Oh, hard. yeah. 
And you know, the Barbara Bush Foundation, so she has a great website, um, but that talks about the economic impl implications, the social and the justice implications. We have 83% yeah. of our inmates in the U.S. cannot, are, are functionally yeah. literate. Yeah, um, yeah. So Martin, do you do any parent workshops or parent trainings or anything like that? No, I, I don't at the moment. I don't do, um, because I, I, I look after my children all day um, and during the night because um, 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 my wife works, um, I, I, I don't get time to do that, those sort of things. Um, in, from September onwards, um, when they're in school, I'll, be, I'll, I'll have an opportunity to um, have a look at uh, a direction of where I'll be heading. I would like to develop a, an organization that I tried to set up in Australia called Childhood Essentials, which mm. would be very much an advocacy agency. It's about childhood and about what children need as, as a sense, the essentials of childhood um, and, um, and and pulling something together around a framework for childhood essentials. And uh, yeah. You're yeah, a gifted, you're a gifted individual with priceless experience. And there was another, I thought you could write a book. And what I what I loved, you used this phrase a few times, the first 1,000 days. Yeah. If people only knew, and you could write all about that. But I, I um, you know, you, you, you said, I have so much to offer globally. And that is why I'm so honored that you're with, with me today because um because of your experience and your practical knowledge and your training, um, you you can help change the trajectory of children all over uh, the world, hopefully. Um, so I'm gonna say goodbye to our audience, Martin, and I wanna just talk to you for just a second after I stop the recording. So I thank you for all the people who are listening on the podcast or watching on the YouTube video for joining Martin Dearlove, who uh, you can find on LinkedIn and message him there, um, for joining us today and really illuminating um, how childhood trauma impacts um, a person's life and their learning. And uh, even if they don't have learning problems, what schools and agencies need to do in order to wrap and educate the whole child. So, um, Thank you so much, Barton. You're welcome. Thank you very much.